greetings from us once again. Today we are presenting 2016 Chemistry Paper 2, KCSE, and this is number one. Number one tested the understanding of the periodic table and chemical families. The question read that use the information in the table below to answer the questions that follow. The examiner wonders that the letters do not represent the actual symbols of the elements. So the letters were R, S, T, U, V, and W. But we want to advise that if uh, you are given letters to represent the elements, it is always good to use the atomic numbers given or the grid of the periodic table given to get now the actual symbols of the elements being talked about. Why is this important? I want to refer you to element U, which is atomic number 17. We know it is chlorine, and please check the way chlorine is symbolized. It is Cl2, which means it exists as diatomic molecules. So when we will be writing the equation involving element U, if a student doesn't use U2 to represent Cl2, you will not be able to get that mark. And for that reason, it is always important that as much as we shall be given letters, it's good we get their equivalent in form of the actual symbols of the elements. Now, having done this, let us now get into answering the questions that were asked based on the table. So the first question was, give a reason why the melting point of S, S is atomic number 12, which is magnesium, is higher than that of R. R is atomic number 11, which is sodium. So from the understanding of the periodic table, we know that R belongs to the alkali metals group, and S belongs to the alkaline earth metals group. So, they both have what we call metallic bonds because they are both metals. But when it comes to melting points, we need to look at the strength of the bonds because that is what is going to determine the melting point. If a metal has stronger bonds, the melting points will be higher. And we also learned that the strength of the metallic bond in metals is determined by the number of delocalized electrons. So for this case, R will have one delocalized electron, while S usually has two per mole of it. So, for this matter, the melting point of S is higher than that of R simply because it has higher number of delocalized electrons and therefore the metallic bonds in it are stronger. So the expected response to this question would have been that R has fewer delocalized electrons. R has fewer delocalized electrons than S. This would give you the first mark. But then you don't end there. You say that because of the fewer delocalized electrons, the metallic bonds the metallic bonds in S are therefore stronger. 
than in R. So that would give you another one mark, total two. We have been able to answer that very well and the two marks are ours. Moving on, the same melting point we have been asked why V has a lower melting point than U. So moving up to our table again, we are being asked to compare V, which is argon, with U, which is chlorine. So here, the examiner wanted an understanding of the existence of these two molecules. This one normally exists as single atoms, what we call monoatomic gas. This one, per molecule, we have two atoms. So you expect the Van der Waals forces in chlorine to be stronger than those in argon. And that is what was expected as the answer to the second part. So here we were supposed to answer that V is monoatomic while U is diatomic. So what happens next? The Van der Waals forces in V are therefore are therefore weaker than those in U. For you to score two marks. So differentiating between V and U in terms of number of atoms per molecule, one mark, and then comparing the Van der Waals forces again for the next mark. Total, two. Now, next question. How does the reactivity of W with chlorine compare with that of R with chlorine? Looking at our table, W is potassium and R is sodium. So we know here the examiner wanted us to have a better understanding of reactivity of alkali metals. And we know potassium is always more reactive than sodium. So the answer expected here was R reacts more vigorously. R reacts more vigorously. This gives you the first mark, but then you are told to explain. So there are quite a number of explanations that were available here. The first one is, it is easier for W to lose, to lose valence electrons than R. Okay, you could also say that W is more electropositive than R. But what I liked most was, our students also had the option of just telling us that reactivity in group one increases down, increases down the group. This one was also a reason. So mentioning R reacts more vigorously, one mark, and then any of those three explanations which I have talked about, another one mark. So you can say it is easier for W to lose valence electrons than R. You could also say R is more, I'm sorry, W is more electropositive than R, or you could simply tell us that in the alkali metal group, as you move down the group, reactivity also increases. Moving on to the next question, write an equation for the reaction between T, T is our phosphorus, and here with excess oxygen. So, phosphorus can react with oxygen to give two oxides depending on the amount of oxygen that is available. We have phosphorus 3 oxide and phosphorus 5 oxide. 
and because for this case we had excess oxygen we would form the higher oxide which is phosphorus 5 oxide so T with O2 you get phosphorus 5 oxide or T2O5 which would be gas so we balance with a 2 on our oxide a 5 on oxygen and a 4 on T now if a student went ahead to now use the actual symbol of the elements this one is also allowed so this would be another option that you would have remember the amount of oxygen is in excess so we expect to form the higher oxide of phosphorus looking at the next question we were asked this one was borrowed from the mall we were asked that when 1.15 grams of R R don't forget was sodium was reacted with water 600 cubic centimeters of gas this gas is obviously hydrogen was produced so we are asked to determine the relative atomic mass of sodium given that molar gas volume is 24 liters at uh, this one is at RTP so the first thing we need to do here is to write an equation between R and water so we are writing an equation between R and water and of course we know R is valency 1 it's sodium so R hydroxide would be written like that and of course plus hydrogen gas balancing we would put R2 here 2 on water and 2 on R if you replaced R with sodium good enough so having had our equation take note mole ratio between gas and R is 2 is 2 1 or 1 is to 2 so from here let's get moles of hydrogen using these volumes we are able to get moles of hydrogen and here we are using first principle approach we know one mole of hydrogen would occupy 24,000 cubic centimeters that would be one mole of hydrogen but in our question we only produced 600 cubic centimeter so how many moles would we have gross multiplication is 600 times 1 divided by 24,000 and that gives me uh, 0 0.025 moles if you do the, math the, ma the mathematics now what about moles of R the mole ratio is 1 is to 2 so you simply multiply this by 2 to get moles of R and that gives us 0 0.05 moles now these moles were equivalent to 1.15 grams so when we are asked about relative atomic mass this is the mass of one mole so the last argument to your answer would be 0 0.05 moles is the same as 1.15 grams what about one mole which will be the same as the relative atomic mass what mass would that be so doing cross multiplication we have 1 times 1.15 over 0 0.05 and if your calculator is good you get 23 as the relative atomic mass and please these things don't have units because they are relative so you stop there don't put G you would miss a half a mark if you did that so writing the correct balanced equation uh, one mark getting moles of the gas a half a mark getting moles of r a half a mark doing the division a half a mark and the final answer without units half a mark total three give one use of element v element v is our noble gas argon so argon has several uses you can talk of used in fluorescent 
fluorescent bulbs or lamps. Please, when we say in, we are not committing ourselves wrongly. I have had students who write this as used in the manufacture of fluorescent bulbs. If you wrote that, you are wrong. So when you are writing uses, please let's be very careful to avoid wrong commitment. Uh, argon can also be used in arc welding. This one is self-explanatory. And because it is inert, we can also use, use it in fire extinguishing. You are asked only one, so you choose any of those three. We want to continue to wish you well as we urge that you support us. If you know of a student elsewhere who would be interested in such kind of presentations, please share the link to our channel and we shall appreciate when we grow together as a family. Wish you all the best.